Right, uh, I thought I'd do a video on the latest controller that I've got my hands on. Which came conveniently as this COVID-19 hit us, so basically stuck at home and not, not doing a lot. Uh, it's from a company called Peruvesa Automation. I think I'm saying that right. And it uses their own software, which is you, my CNC. Uh, they do various boards ranging from the ET10 which is the sort of higher end to the lower end ET6 and then you've got an ET7 which is the one that I'm actually showing you now uh, so that's the website I'll, I'll say straight away straight off the bat I'm not being paid to do this video they haven't asked me to do the video I'm doing it off my own back mostly for Lads on forum, my CNC UK forum, which I know is coincidentally very close to this company's name, but nothing to do with each other whatsoever. Uh, I will just straight away, I will say that they have gave me discount on this card uh, because we've, I've been discussing using them on my routers that I build and sell. So uh, I have negotiated some discount, but I'm under no obligation to uh, pull my punches or anything when I'm checking this card out and telling you guys about it so anyone who's on the forum knows I'll, I'll tell it the way it is so anyway straight to it this video is basically it's only just showing it off initially I haven't wired it up I will do wire I will wire it up and I will I will tell you more about it but this is just an introduction as such and just to prove my point that I'm not paid and I'm not pulling punches, I'm going to throw a grumble in straight away. And it relates to these. Nothing wrong with these. Nice, decent enough size. Good quality. My grumble is how they're laid out on the card. That plugs in that way. I can't get to access the terminals. So if I want to change away, I've got to take the whole block out. Not a massive deal, but it's... It's not ideal. Same same on the others. The terminals, the screws are there. The terminals are there. But this block, the, term, the screws are there. I can't get to them without taking that block out. And, and even then, I've probably got to take that block out because they're, they're so close to the board, they're awkward to get to. Don't see why they couldn't have sort of gone that arrangement, if I'm honest with you. Different type of block. I know there's different types. So it's a little grumble, but... In my case, I, I, for, for somebody who's just building a one-off one for themselves and that, it's not the end of the world. But I, I'm doing several of these at a time, possibly, and out in the field. And bearing in mind, this card's got to compete with other cards that I use. And, and on pretty much nearly all, all my routers, I use CS Labs controllers. And I'm sorry, if we're, going, if we, if we're point scoring, this is just going to, the CS Lab blows it away. Because that's a CS Lab controller. It takes up more room. But the terminal blocks, as you can see, they're accessible. They're easy to get to. They sit on DIN rails. It wins hands down for me. Personally, all building machines. I much prefer that way than, than this way. And if I have got to have this way, I would prefer them to be sort of that way. <laughs> so, it's just a comment. It's not the end of the world, but... Like I say, when, when, we, when we're doing a comparison and we're trying to match them against other cards, it's it's in the negative column, not the positive. So, But it's a small one. Uh, right, you can see from my hand the size of the board. It, it's, I would say, probably 7 to 8 inches in length and about 5 inches in width. Uh, Mounts onto a backboard with, with various mounting locations. It's an Ethernet based card, as you can see there. It's got a micro USB, which I believe is for updating the firmware. Uh, nice big ground connection there, like that. Uh, it's reasonably laid out. Well, it's very, it's it's well it's laid out quite well in, in terms of where the terminals are what they are. 
uh, start at this end. I believe this is for you can plug in keyboards and various things in there. I think this is for a serial connections. This connector here is for the relay outputs. This one is for the general outputs. Uh, then we move on to this one. These are the motor outputs. These are the encoder inputs. Uh, not quite sure what that is. I have to look at that. And these are the inputs. Uh, again, I'm not sure what these are, but what we can do if we look on the back, the kindly silk screen down the back, what each one is. So, uh, so I'm looking at that one there. This is just general 24 volt and some grounds. Then the encoders, and then you've got your pulse directions for your motor outputs. Those are your inputs. Some more inputs. Ah, they're the analog. They're for the analogs. Inputs and outputs, I would imagine. That block I said, that little black block is operator panel. And then you've got your serial connection. So your general outputs. Some pulse switch modulator outputs. And then your relay outputs. No, they're your relay outputs, sorry. They're your general outputs. Yeah, so nice to laid out. I would have preferred the silk screen on this side, but I understand there's only so much you can do and it's quite packed out there, so I can see why they couldn't get it on there. But it is nice to be able to just look at the board and see what's what. Uh, not sure what that one is. So, see if we can go have a look. And it doesn't tell us. So. But, the manual will. Uh, and that's the next thing. If I go to the manual, it's an online manual. Which at first you think, ugh, no PDF. Which... It is a bit of a, I would have liked a PDF, but it's not the end of the world. And it is an absolutely brilliant manual. And they've got a manual for every board. It's not a general man, one manual fits all. Each one's got its own. A lot of it is repeated in some cases, but, but it's very, very well laid out. And it caters to both novices with, with diagrams. And it also caters to the more advanced it, a more intellectual showing you uh, all the components that are on it and how the wired and what they do and say it breaks down and shows you on here what um, where the grounds and the 24 volts are all the, it tells you everything you need to know for all levels which I believe me a lot of manuals just don't they're absolutely rubbish so it's a very very good manual in that sense and like I say it tells you everything that you need to know it's one of the best manuals I've seen if I'm honest with you and what you can do is you can print segments out which is to be honest with you that's where I do with PDFs like the CS Labs controller gives you a PDF and I just print pages out from it that I use often so the inputs and outputs and the analog side and for the spindle and stuff like that the rest of the blurb the bump I don't need to know don't want to know if you need to know it, you can just go check out it online. Where this does fail a little bit or isn't ideal is for someone like me who was mending machines out in the field and things like that. If I needed to check something out, a lot of machines don't have internet access. Uh, so that's a bit less than ideal in that sense. But again, the main stuff that I would need, I would print out. Put it in a folder and keep it in a folder. Uh, so it's not the end of the world in that sense. So yeah, PDF would be great. But again, PDF out in the field won't do me any good unless I've got a laptop with me or something like that. Or I put it on the, the actual computer that's running the machine, which is what I tend to do, if I'm honest. But it's not the end of the world. I'd rather have a really good comprehensive manual like this is 
than a shitty PDF manual that you often get. So it's uh, I'm not complaining one one bit on that side. Uh, regards the the board and how it, what it will run on. It runs on Windows. It will run on Linux. Linux, it's not Linux CNC that you often hear referred to, it's actually a Linux operating system and I'm not sure which one it is, there's several flavours I believe I'm not into Linux at all so I can't tell you uh, on that score I don't know if it runs on Mac or not but what I do know you can do is it will run on a Raspberry Pi, some of these little micro uh, and these other types of micro boards that all in one PCs. If you see there, it's outlined. It's actually designed to bolt on, and I've actually got a Raspberry Pi there. This is an early one, so I don't I don't think it will run on this one, but I think it needs a specific one rated version. But that's where it would mount, and when it mounts on there, it becomes a standalone controller. You don't need anything else with it. It's all in one, which is quite handy for some machines you don't need a separate PC you could build it into a control box stick stick a flat screen on the front uh, with a keyboard and away you go that's what this is so you can create an operator panel you can have keyboards a matrix keyboard matrix tapped into it and everything so uh, quite flexible setup the other key benefit of it which is why I'm looking at it and interested in it is it uses its own software it's not using a third-party software like Mac 3 anything like that uh, which is good and, and the software is very very capable uh, which is what I like about it I'm not over impressed with the front ends the actual how it looks if I'm honest but that's a minor thing I can make my own screens or and they are updating the screens I believe so they probably are bringing screens that are not so fussy it's a little bit too fussy for me there's too much information on there that doesn't really need to be on i don't think so we'll see what comes out but it's behind the scenes that interests me and this this board and the software is very very capable in what it can do yeah it's very flexible and they run all sorts of machines from it that ranging from plasmas it's very good for plasma machines or run mills, routers, lasers, pretty much most things that you want to run for it from it. They've got some, go check out the website, they've got some good links to some nice machines, uh, little jewelry machines, five axis jewelry machines, and uh, plotters very good for plotters. You can fit a vision system to it, and tangential knives, and all the little bits and bats that they use for them sort of machines. I've not really done a lot with those, but uh, it can do it. And that's what I like about it. I, I could use this board on on various types of machines, from plasma to mills to most things in between. And for somebody like me who gets asked to build custom bespoke one-off things, that's quite an handy thing. The point of me getting this card is to try to replace Mac 3. Uh, it's getting a bit long in tooth now. Absolutely eight Mac four. Uh, and I'd just like to get away from it. You'll see three hundreds and the likes of that. I've used them. I'm not the software's great. I like the software. It's all it's good. It's but it's just something I don't like about the boards and the. The boards that it fastens to, the main one is the UB one. There's something about it. I can't put my finger where it is. I don't like. So uh, I have used them and I do use them. I have no problems using them. But I would like to get a replacement and standardize what I use it, which is what I do now. For what most what I do, Mac three is doing the job, and I tend to use Mac three and CS Labs controllers. And the CS Lab controller is a brilliant control. It's rock solid, electrically. Nothing phases it, bothers it. 
the reliable, the most reliable one I've ever used. Uh, just Mac 3 is getting long in the tooth now. Mac 4 is horrible. So uh, it's been left behind. And that's why I'm going to use it. I'm going to, I'm interested in using it. So I'm going to test it to death. It won't go on any customer's machine until I'm happy with it. So initially I'm just going to test it on the bench here. I've got to... I've got a servo over there and some steppers, there's a big DC servo lingering at the back there. Uh, various little things I can plug in and test it with. So uh, I'll have a little play on the bench and then I'll throw it, I'm, I'm going to stick it on a machine and uh, see if we can grind it into the dirt. <laughs> See what turns up. Right, so that's it. I thought I'd just put that out there and show you. I will make some more videos when it's got something connected up to it. If anybody wants to know anything, just ask. If you want me to try anything on it, ask me and I will if I can. Okay, cheers.